the uh, the the thrill of being a commanding officer at sea is something that I cherished and looked forward to. And my skippers on my early days in submarines had let me do so many things, handle the ship, and of course I'd had every job on the boat, uh, that I had enormous confidence going in as, as a commanding officer, the corporal. And it was, uh, it was a joy for me to, uh, to handle the ship and to do the same thing to my junior officers that I had uh, been privileged to have as a, as a young officer growing up. And I let, tried to let them handle the ship as much as possible always trying to uh, to take it away from them, of course, before we ran into to anything. Uh, some memories I have uh, of, of submarining uh, is once on patrol at the North Cape and seeing those enormous uh, cave in of snow and ice from the from the North Cape falling in, into the ocean there. And uh, of course I made a good many uh, six month patrols to when I was stationed on the uh, Menhaden and the Catfish and the Barbell, uh, many uh, p patrols, six months patrols to the, to the uh, Western Pacific, in and around Japan, and and uh, uh, doing exercises with the fleet in uh, off the uh, uh, in in the in the Pacific, uh, going to Okinawa, and uh, I can remember going into uh, Hong Kong, and uh, the. The sampan, or uh, or everywhere, I was up all night as we were going in to be sure we didn't run into a, a, a sampan, and uh, the sisters at a Catholic hospital would always come on board and solicit blood from the. We'd always want to, to, to sailors to be blood donors. And uh, of course, they always go to the captain first and says, "If you'll, if you'll agree, well, a lot of your, your shipmates will." So I did, but I was so tired, I was exhausted. I'd been up all night, and she stuck that needle in, and immediately I went pale. And she she says, "I think we'll just take a half a pint from you." <laughs> it was things like, like, like that, and the. Uh, the joy of, of uh, submarine. You know when you cast off that that last line and you're free from the shore in all respects, there's only one person, God, that's, that's senior to you at that point. And I had always expired. I was commanding officer of, uh, of the USS Corporal out of New London and commanding officer of the USS Boissel, the DD-845, out of uh, San Diego. And uh, we did a lot of swashbuckling uh, with the corporal. We had a three-month cruise to the, uh, to the Mediterranean. And that was fun, working with the fleet, uh, giving the uh, destroyers uh, a target to, uh, uh, to, to search for, to get them used to looking for Russian submarines. And, uh, and uh, playing with the aircraft carriers and trying to sneak up on them and pretend to torpedo them. And, uh, and you were in the Mediterranean. Uh, there's some terrifying things. There's a, there's a thermal layer in the Mediterranean such that you go below about 60 feet and uh, there's, it's, uh, it's like a, 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 a blanket there. But coming up, you can't you 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 can't hear everything up top, and often you come up to be faced with a an immediate emergency situation. But uh, anyway, it was fun and games. Uh, the most terrifying moment came for me when I was executive officer on the Barbell, 
uh, a new fast attack submarine, the USS Barbell SS-580, and we sprung a uh, leak in a five-inch line at about 600 feet and quickly, quickly, very quickly came to the surface. But the, the noise of when that pipe gave away, you could hear throughout the boat. We were fortunate that we made it back to the surface. The joy and thrill of being a submariner and a Navy officer in command of a ship at sea is, is offset somewhat by the fact that uh, it causes a lot of family separation. And I was very fortunate to be married to a, a lady that took this all in stride and supported me 100% whenever I was uh, making decisions about my career. Of course, she was very, very happy in 1974 when we looked each other in the eye and said, why don't we just get out of the Navy and come back? But, oh, what a joy. You know, I still have and, and can see in my mind's eye uh, coming back from a, a six months deployment and looking there in the pier and there would be my wife with our four daughters and she would have been prepared for this return sometime and she would have made dresses for all and they all would would uh, look alike and uh, we had my favorite uh, pot roast dinner for dinner and uh, so uh, I guess you might say that uh, Perhaps you can have more than one honeymoon if you if you join the navy and uh, and 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 have that uh, have that opportunity. I I uh, I I just marvel at 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 the way I would uh, you know like some men go off and say I'll see you tonight, honey. I would leave that morning and say you know I hope I'll be home for. Christmas, and this would have been about March. <laughs> so that was uh, the sad, but, but Karen rolled with those punches better than anybody. I'm, I'm sure to this day I don't appreciate the, the sacrifice that, that, that she made to uh, enable me to be all that I wanted to be uh, as a naval officer. One of the uh, more exciting things, I guess you would say, uh, that happened to me in uh, 1962 when I was the executive officer, the second in command on a submarine barbell, we went to the Seattle World's Fair. We took the whole squadron up. Of course, we were the star of the thing because we were a, a new submarine and a, a fast attack submarine that had just, just been built. Uh, and we came up uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway there and, and uh, moored at the head of a, a long pier there in Seattle. We had uh, an opportunity, since we were going to be at the fair, to bring our wives, so our wives came up to join us there. And the uh, squadron commander wanted us to take the press to sea and go out into the harbor and submerge with the press on board. And lo and behold, my skipper became ill. And and the squadron commander asked him, well, do you want to send down to San Diego and get another commanding officer? And bless his heart, he had confidence in me, and he says, oh, no, Paul can do it. And so I got to be skipper of the barbell for a day with my squadron commander, the wives, the press, and the city fathers all on board. And you know, submarines act different in freshwater than they do in salt. And the last time we had been submerged was in the ocean. And here we were in the, in the, in the uh, not completely salty water of Seattle Bay. And I was wondering, well, are we gonna sink to the bottom <laughs> of the knot? And, uh, and this was the next day after we had been there. My officers had been out that night. They were mostly sober for the, uh, for, for, the, for the next day. But we started to get underway, and this was a new submarine. 
and it has different from the old two propeller submarines. This had a single screw and handled differently. And uh, the, I told the pilot came on board to, to get us on underway and I told him, instructed him in how this submarine was different and I think he looked down his nose at me and said, what's this young skipper trying to tell me? But I knew and sure enough, he started to back away and put the rudder over, but it would not answer to the rudder once it had headway on. So I took the submarine away from the pilot, which is kind of unheard of, because he was just about to crash us into the pier. And I had to do that twice before we uh, managed to get out. It was opening day of the yachting season too, so ships and little were all trying to come over and see what that funny looking periscope was over there. But I took a picture of the Space Needle through my periscope and the next day the Seattle newspaper on the front page was a full blown picture of of the Seattle Space Needle with you could tell it you know through the round periscope picture that I had with the crosshairs and everything. But that was an exciting day with the with, uh, with, the, with the wives on board and the and uh, and the skipper, and I was so thankful that he had faith in, in me that he didn't send for someone else to take the ship to sea.